All right, guys, your last exam was much better than the first one, so congratulations to everybody for doing such a better job. And this is just going to be a review of what I was looking for in the short answer questions. So if you wonder why you didn't get full credit for something, this will help you answer that. So the first question in the list of uh, short answer questions is distinguish among the geostrophic wind, the gradient wind, and the surface winds. The geostrophic winds blow in straight paths parallel to isobars. They occur in the upper atmosphere out of the boundary layer and they are a balance of the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis effect. Gradient winds are similar but they curve around high and low pressure cells due to centripetal forces. Surface winds cross the isobars due to friction which slows the wind down. So there's friction at the surface that does not exist above the boundary layer in the upper atmosphere. The next question, describe the steps in the development of the southwest monsoon. Is it truly a monsoon? Why or why not? So I was looking for some uh, well-written statement, meaning full sentences, uh, that explained some or all of this you see here. So intense heating of the desert in the summer causes air to rise and the development of a thermal low. In addition to that, there's an upper air subtropical high that migrates northward in the summertime and exists over the southwestern U.S. northern Mexico area. Winds flow around the high in a clockwise rotation and the, the winds bring with them moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and Gulf of California um, and the wind flow comes from the south or southeast as the winds come into Arizona and kind of the southwestern United States. These unstable conditions along with the inflow of moisture produce thunderstorms and the likelihood of, of thunderstorms. It is a true monsoon in that the winds change direction. That's what a monsoon is, winds changing direction. Normally we have westerly winds, but during monsoon season we have southerly, southeasterly winds. Next, the leading edge of a sea breeze resembles a miniature cold front. What type of weather might develop along a sea breeze front? Well, this is basically asking what type of weather occurs along a cold front. And so we can think of this as a weak cold front. And what happens is that cold air from the sea, relatively cold, uh, blows inland and it pushes the warm continental air up. And because it's by the sea, it's moist air. So that warm, moist air rises, causing cumulus clouds to form, which can develop into cumulonimbus clouds and produce thunderstorms, hail, winds, uh, potential for tornadoes, and so on. A um, good example of this is the peninsula of Florida. So you've got a sea breeze on the eastern seaboard blowing inland and another sea breeze on the western seaboard blowing inland, and the two kind of collide in the middle of the peninsula and you get a lot of uh, days of thunderstorm development right along that peninsula. That's why Tampa is called the lightning capital of the world. Next, describe the scientific evidence that led climatologists to agree that climate change in the form of global warming is occurring and is human induced. So I did not ask what is climate change or what is global warming, which some people answered that question, but that is not the question here. So I was looking for some or all of what you see here. The surface air temperature record shows a marked increase in temperatures, particularly over the last two decades. Proxy data like ice core samples from uh, glaciers show that the atmosphere contains much more carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases since the dawn of the industrial age than in times previous. Sea level increases and the melting of glaciers are further evidence of the increased temperature. The burning of fossil fuels along with the urbanization of our natural land cover have been proven to cause an increase in surface temperatures, which is all human induced. And then finally, explain why the height of the 500 millibar surface generally slopes downward from the tropics to the polar region. What I was looking for here is just uh, something like this. The height of the 500 millibar surface is higher near the equator because the air is warmer and therefore less dense which means it expands upward. As you move poleward, the air cools and therefore becomes more dense, thus lowering the height of the 500 millibar surface. So something along those lines and a coherently stated short answer. 
All right, guys, um, your answers or your exams are graded. Your final exams are available for you to view in the My Grades section. I will be submitting them later this week to uh, the college to go on to your report cards. And um, that's it. So congratulations for finishing out the summer semester. I know it went quick and it was pretty intense, but you did it. You're finished now. So good luck, and maybe I'll see some of you pilots flying over the skies here in Sedona. Okay, bye-bye.